Good morning and welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of April 15th, 2021. Per Executive Order 29-20, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act, this meeting will be conducted entirely by teleconferencing. Per the Brown Act, we have posted a notice of the meeting agenda 72 hours in advance. During the current state of emergency and in the interest of public health and safety, the city is providing alternatives to in-person attendance for viewing and participating in the meetings. This meeting will be held on a Zoom webinar platform and members of the public may participate and provide comments by accessing the meeting online or by calling into the meeting. Instructions are included on the city's website and on today's agenda. So with that, I would now like to take a roll call. As I call your name, please indicate if you are present. Commissioner Austin. Present. Commissioner Boomhauer. Present. Commissioner Malbro. Present. Commissioner Moden. Present. Commissioner Otsuji. Present. Vice Chairman Whalen. Present. And Chairman Hoffman is present. And as you heard, we have a new Planning Commission member uh, Mr. Ken Malbro and staff, if you'd like to give us a brief intro. Thank you, Chairman Hoffman. Uh, yes, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce Ken Malbro to the Planning Commission. Commissioner Malbro is a proud native and lifelong resident of Southeast San Diego. He is a former deputy fire chief for the San Diego Fire and Rescue Department and retiring after 31 years of service. Commissioner Malbro is also an active community leader with deep experience serving on town councils and advisory boards, including the chair of the Choice Valley Community Planning Group, chair of the city's consolidation plan advisory board, and chair of the O'Farrell slash uh, Valencia Park Town Council. Commissioner Balro's experience does not end there as he is currently serves on the San Diego Parks and uh, Parks Foundation the California State Board of Registered Nursing and is a member of the Black American Political Association of California, San Diego chapter. On behalf of the city, I thank him for his willingness to serve as a commissioner and continue the benefits of his valuable experience and expertise to the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Marlboro, or Commissioner Marlboro. <laughs> And I uh, just want to say, as the chairman and speaking for all the rest of the commission, uh, you are welcome to our family here. Glad to have you on the commission. Uh, read your background, uh, and it's very extensive, very impressive. So I think uh, it's going to help us out quite a bit. And Commissioner Malbro, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Well, thank you. It's a, it's a true honor to be here. Uh, this is something that I kind of dreamed of. Uh, quite a few years ago while serving on the Torres Valley Community Planning Group. Um, Tim did such a great job of giving my background that I don't really need to repeat much, but again, I'm ready to serve. Uh, I have a lot to learn and I have some great mentors on this, on this uh, commission that's gonna help me get there. So I'm ready to go. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. And again, welcome. Uh, the staff members online with us today are Tim Daly from Development Services, uh, Tate Galloway from the Planning Department, Tony Khalil, City Engineer, and Deputy City Attorney Shannon Eckmeyer. So now I'd like to go ahead and start our agenda. And the first part of our agenda is the public comment period for non-agenda items. And if there's anybody here who would like to speak uh, on planning related matters, but that are not on today's agenda, uh, just indicate by raising, there's a button on your screen that raises a hand uh, and I can see the people who are here. So if you want to say anything, please raise your hand now. And okay, uh, we have uh, Mr. Albert Demeran has raised his hand and Albert unmute yourself and you will have three minutes to uh, for your statement. And Albert, you have your hand raised, but you are muted. So if you do wanna speak, you'll have to unmute yourself. 
It looks like we just lost, we keep losing him. Yep. Okay, uh, I see him, Mr. We got it. There we go. Okay, well, oh. I live over here right below USD and uh, on Mildred Street, and this is a residential area. And my lot used to be uh, R4, but they moved it to R3 when they built the bank, uh, which is the same party that is asking for uh, an extension uh, to consolidate four lots. Uh, I guess they're 50 by 100. So it seems like he's already built the units uh, on four lots, and, and he's going to make it to one lot. Uh, which would be one address at 5546, I believe. And these are gonna be condos. They just got you going uh, six stories right in front of me and I can't even see SeaWorld anymore. And they put 55 units up there. And I think the parking here is just really bad. And I, th I think it's 0.75 parking per unit but I don't know. I don't know what happened to one per person. Uh, and there's no setbacks. I'm, as far as the, the rules go, uh, they don't have any garden areas or anything. Uh, no storage. Uh, uh, I don't see who who allowed this to uh, proceed. This used to be two, uh, two parking lots at 5508 uh, Mildred Street. And then this Loretta thing is the same, same people. And it seems like they put the cart before the horse. Uh, it's already built. And I, I object to this uh, zoning change I guess the 40,000 square feet would probably go into a, I guess it's a, a different RX lot or no, it'd be a R, RS. Uh, you know, excuse me, uh, Ms. Mr. Demeron, um, apologize. I just realized I did not know what you were talking about, but you're talking about item one on the consent agenda. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're, we're not there yet. Um, with those objections, what we might do is we'll see, we'll get a, a vote of the commission, whether we want to pull that from the consent and listen to your objections. So uh, this is the non-agenda portion. So it, it just hit me as you, when you said four lots consolidating. So apologize everybody for not catching that earlier. Um, so Mr. Demeron, why don't you hold off? Um, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And I don't see anyone else under non-agenda public items. Um, so we'll go to the next item, uh, request for items to be continued and or withdrawn. And it looks like we do have one and staff, could you tell us about that? Yes, thank you, Chairman Hoffman. Uh, we would like to go ahead and request a continuance of the Junipers item, which is your item number three. Project number 586670. As you can see, a uh, staff report was not prepared at this time. The staff is uh, finalizing the report and some of the issues. And we would like to request a continuance to a date certain of April 29th, uh, 2021, please. Okay, uh, is there any objections to that? Any discussion? And if not, I will take a motion to continue oh, this item to the Date certain April 29th, and that was uh, Vice Chairman Whalen with a motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Boomhauer with a second. And let's take a vote. Commissioner Austin? Aye. Commissioner Boomhauer? Aye. Commissioner Malbro? Aye. Commissioner Moden? Aye. Commissioner Otsuji? Aye. Vice Chair Whalen? Aye. Chairman Hoffman is an aye. So that item has been continued to April 29th, 2021. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, since no other items on that, so we'll go to our consent agenda. Uh, this is the digital Loretta Lofts project. Um, and I'm going to leave this to the pleasure of the commission. Uh, if we do have one speaker, I would like to give him his opportunity, even though I, he's had a full minute there, but uh, let's, we'll start over on that. Uh, is anyone needing to have a staff report? Um, and I'll just by show of yeah. anyone, any one hand will go ahead and have a staff report. Okay. Um, in that case, I don't think, I think we can dispense with the staff report. I've read the report uh, and familiar with the issues. And what I'd like to do is uh, open up the public testimony portion. And if we can get uh, Mr. Uh, Demeron back on and uh, he'll be our first speaker and anyone else who would like to speak on this, please raise your, your hand. I'm not sure if the applicants here um, if the applicant is here, you have a chance to give a proposal. I will let you go first. Uh, if you are here, just identify yourself by raising your hand or just uh, speaking up. This is Tony Christensen. I'm the civil engineer and land surveyor uh, on the project. Uh, I, I think the, the, uh, the uh, person who is making his statement is, is uh, talking about the procedure, the way this is generally done. Uh, for this project, just like others, the uh, ministerial building permit was secured and now we're going through the mapping uh, uh, portion of the project, uh, which is typical for these types of projects, so. Okay, I appreciate that. And maybe what I'd like to do is ask staff, staff, is there anything that's unusual at all about the, the procedure that this project is going through? Uh, good morning, Martha Blake. I'm the project manager on this project. There is not. The um, development itself was reviewed under a ministerial building permit and was approved ministerially. The action before you today is simply the mapping to allow the ownership to convert to condominium ownership. Okay, thank you very much for that. So Mr. Demeron, uh, if I will give you uh, three minutes now because now I think we know what you're more talking about. Um, if you would go ahead and like to begin. Well, first of all, I just wondered why this didn't go through the Linda Vista Planning Commission. Uh, they have no idea of, uh, of is that ever being set up uh, with them. Uh, they just got bypassed. Uh, this is the first I've heard about it and it's already built. And uh, I, I was watching these guys uh, build the, the first uh, six story building and the height limitation is only supposed to be three as far as the codes go and uh, no, not much you could do about it they're already built as far as the zoning goes uh, 40,000 square feet versus 5,000 square feet four lots at 5,000 square feet comes to 40,000 square feet. Uh, I believe that was an R3 or R4 lot for each one of those. Uh, and at 40,000, it might go to a higher zoning rate. And I guess these people don't pay taxes. Uh, just the owner pays taxes. Uh, rentals don't pay taxes. That's one objection I've got. And as far as parking goes, uh, it's already over parking. The USD people come down here and park and walk up to the college. And uh, I can't see where they should have more parking. And it's just parking is underneath the bit, their first floor. That's it. And they built on top of that. As far as the rezoning goes, uh, I would say if you left it at the same same zoning, uh, I guess uh, the taxes would be higher for the 40,000 square feet versus the 5,000 square feet. 
but at the, you're talking about 30 units here. That's uh, quite a few people uh, for the, what they've got. Uh, it's it's kind of like it's already built. So what can you do? Uh, I would say that the amount of people that are living there, the taxes should be higher if they consolidate. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, just one thing I want to point out that it did go to the community group on November 23rd and it was voted 11-0 to recommend approval with no conditions. Uh, but um, is anything the commission has heard um, reason enough to pull this off consent and we can go into a discussion, but we'll have to move this item down or otherwise I'll take a motion to approve it as a consent item. Move approved. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve the consent calendar by item by Vice Chair Whalen, a second by Commissioner Austin. Is there any other discussion? Seeing as none, we'll take a vote. Uh, Commissioner Austin? Aye. Commissioner Boomhauer? Aye. Commissioner Malbro? Aye. Commissioner Moden? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Otsuji? Aye. Vice Chair Whalen? Aye. Chairman Hoffman is an aye. So that consent calendar item passes. We will now go into approval of the agenda. We already did continue one item. Uh, I don't think there's any other changes. So we'll go to director's reports. Are there any director's reports? Uh, uh, Chairman Hoffman, uh, Development Service doesn't have a director's report, but I know that uh, planning department and also um, uh, Brad Richter would like to make some comments. Yeah. This is Tate Galloway, Planning Department. So first of all, I just wanted to um, let the commission know that the local chapter, the local San Diego chapter of the American Planning Association um, has awarded the planning department for the city of San Diego with the um, uh, planning agency award for 2021. Um, also, the, um, the department received an award for uh, best practice award for the uh, general plan housing element, um, as well as the environmental planning award for the complete communities housing solutions and mobility choices, um, and a merit award for comprehensive um, plan large for a plan document for a large jurisdiction for the Kearney Mesa community plan update. And then finally, another merit award for the in the transportation planning category for the Mission Boulevard public spaces and act, active transportation plan. So um, it's really exciting for the department to be able to get uh, this recognition and these awards. Um, certainly, it's uh, credit to the staff that we have working on it, uh, as well as all the various departments that we work for or work with uh, throughout the city. And of course, uh, many of these um, items have gone to this planning commission and your input and guidance has uh, helped play a, a big role in a lot of these documents and the success. So I um, wanted to let the commission know about that. Um, also um, wanted to follow up, um, Commissioner Asuji had some questions last week and the, uh, our previous meeting before. So I'll start with the first question that uh, regarding um, tree removal. Uh, City Council Policy 200-5 addresses the removal um, of trees and the primary uh, removal has to do with trees that are um, damaged or there could be an immediate safety issue. The city um, will remove those trees as soon as possible. Now, if a tree is damaged or could potentially affect an infrastructure improvement project, um, the city will work with the affected property owner um, to remove uh, the tree um, and then later on the stump and the roots. Um, also, property owners do have the ability to themselves remove 
uh, damaged uh, trees um, through a uh, tree permit that they can obtain from the city. So again, council policy 205 goes into greater detail on that. Um, regarding the other uh, questions the uh, commissioner had um, regarding the downtown uh, mobility plan related to bikeways and then the 14th Avenue promenade, I've been invited Brad Richter, deputy director with uh, for the urban division uh, with development services and Brad oversees uh, planning uh, for downtown. So I'll turn it over to Brad to address that. And I believe he has a, just a brief presentation he'll share um, to address the, the questions you've asked. Brad? Yes, thank you, Kate. Um, I will share my screen here. So Uh, sorry about that. So the um, downtown mobility plan was approved by the city council back in 2016 and set out a number of goals to improve both pedestrian and bicycle facilities in the downtown area, as well as other modes of travel. Um, one key part of that was the Greenways project. And I'm for some reason not able to enlarge my screen like normal. Oh, here we go, maybe. Yes, there we go. Sorry about that. And so one of the key components was the greenways. These are a set of pedestrian focused corridors that are gonna connect uh, existing and future parks within the downtown area, providing additional green space. Uh, some people call them linear parks or pedestrian promenades. And there's three north, south and three east, west streets. We focused on 14th street to begin with and uh, completed a master plan for the street. Basically what a greenway is, is you take an existing street and you expand sidewalk on one side of the street, eliminating the parking lane and one of the three travel lanes to create more of a widened pedestrian experience as you see here. I'm happy to announce that we just completed the first block of the greenway system on 14th street. Um, and as you can see here, the 14th street consists of 11 blocks. Um, the city of San Diego through its consultant Civic San Diego is designing and constructing three of the blocks. The first one is between B and Market Street. The second one between Market and Island Avenue is currently in plan check and will start construction this year. And the third block is within the East Village Green Park, which will also start construction this year. Uh, the city is pursuing other funding sources to do additional blocks, but the blocks will also be constructed by new development when it occurs. Uh, to the south between KNL streets, the Modera project is constructing a block of the Greenway and that should be completed within the next couple months. And then the St. Vincent de Paul and Chelsea development is constructing an affordable housing project down between Commercial Street and Imperial. They will be constructing a full block of the Greenway there. As I mentioned, we just opened up our first block, which is between G Street and Market Streets in East Village. As you can see here, we expanded the existing sidewalk area out another 14 feet, created a, a second pedestrian path and additional landscaping in a second row of trees. A key component of this block was uh, the installation of a number of industrial artifacts which were donated to the city from the family of Bob Sinclair, who was one of our East Village pioneers years ago and contains a series of story panels that shows images of the industrial businesses that were in the neighborhood uh, decades ago and tells the story of East Village. So we're very happy that this first block had its opening. I uh, encourage you to go out and look at it. And as you'll see over the next couple of years, additional blocks along 14th Street will be constructed. We'll also have the first block of the East Street Greenway constructed in about two years with a development project between 15th and 16th. And in the coming years, we'll have several blocks of 8th Avenue uh, between B Street and Broadway or C Street uh, constructed associated with development uh, projects as well as a public park along C Street. The other key component of the mobility plan was the installation of protected bike lanes or cycleways uh, throughout downtown. And as you can see on the map here, it's intended to be able to connect you throughout downtown into adjacent communities with protected bike facilities. Again, we modify an existing streetscape here with three lanes of travel, move the parking lane out away from the curb and create a two-way cycle track uh, on one side of the street. 
To date, three of those have been constructed. That's Beach Street through Little, Little Italy, Sixth Avenue, connecting that down to J Street, and then J Street out to Park Boulevard. Uh, the next phase is extending J Street out to the freeway um, can, and constructing Park Boulevard, North C Street and C Street East of Park Boulevard and converting the existing three cycleways into two-way cycleways with signal modifications and other work. So all of those projects should be completed by June of this year. The next phase will be Pacific Highway, installing one-way cycle tracks along the stretch from Laurel Street all the way down to Harbor Drive. Uh, the next phase after that will be State Street um, on the western side of downtown. Hopefully that will be under construction next year. And then the final phase will be Broadway, B Street, and um, there? Broadway, B Street, and Park Boulevard, south of C Street. So um, we hope to have those completed over the next couple of years. Uh, we do have funding for a majority of this project. It comes from downtown impact fees, uh, a developer impact fees, a grant from Sandeg, and another $7 million from the state's affordable housing and sustainable communities grant program. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Brad. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, I really appreciate all the time uh, that you've given uh, uh, to the community. Uh, hate to see you uh, leave. Hopefully I can, maybe I can convince you to stay a couple more years. <laughs> The reason I wanted to hear about the update on these uh, uh, projects is that, you know, this has been around forever and I was so happy to see it uh, being installed. And uh, I'm sure you, you were part of, uh, you know, the impetus of uh, getting these things done because it's a, a great addition. And I'm glad to hear that the Pacific Highway is on the agenda. I mean, that's been there forever. Yeah. And, uh, I really appreciate the, the effort that everybody has taken in regards to these uh, projects, especially the pedestrian one. Uh, the bicycle one is great. Uh, there's some issues on that, but uh, uh, with the combination of the bicycle and also there's pedestrian type of situations that are enhanced in those too. So it gives great character, uh, you know, both to the neighborhood and in the city in regards to it. And it kind of, uh, puts a lot of uh, uh, open space and trails together. So I really appreciate uh, this report and I hope uh, we continue to uh, get funding to accomplish these efforts. But thank you very much and I wish you well in your uh, next endeavor. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Brad, just a couple come. Oh, I see Commissioner Austin, you go first. Hey, thank you. No, this is great, uh, very exciting. I too have been watching this over the years, and so it's fun to see it starting or, uh, and continuing to be implemented. Uh, I was curious, what is the latest on the village, uh, East Village Green? Uh, that project is just finishing up permitting through Development Services Department. We hope, or Civic San Diego, uh, on behalf of the city, is hoping to put it out to bid this, this spring, uh, receive the bids, and award a contract and start construction by this fall. Fantastic. That's great. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, just a couple comments, uh, <clears throat> Brad. Great job. Three of us uh, commissioners were here in 2016 to hear the mobility element. It was really quite controversial at the time with a lot of the property owners. Um, and I'll be honest, when I first saw the, the breadth and depth of it, I thought, well, this is going to be a, you know, a 20 year project to finish all this off, but the progress has been amazing. And I'm glad to see the implementation of, of that plan. So really great job there. Um, and, and the second comment I have is to the planning department and for all those awards, I see the heads getting bigger and bigger each week as you keep bringing in these awards and really congratulations on that. It's a great staff. Uh, you guys have done just fantastic work uh, over the years as I've seen. So congratulations for that as well. Thank you very much. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, oh, I'm sorry. 
Oh, yeah, oh. I, just just real quickly, uh, Brad, thanks for the um, uh, presentation. I just had a quick question on your greenways. I think they're great, first of all. Um, how will they be maintained? A variety of sources. When the city builds a block, um, Stormwater and Transportation Department and Park and Rec Department will both have maintenance responsibilities. When we put in special objects like the industrial artifacts, in order to keep those clean graffiti free and just overall maintain them, the Downtown San Diego Partnership has their clean and safe program and they will maintain those uh, extraordinary objects in the right of way. When a developer builds a greenway block, they will be responsible for maintaining it in perpetuity. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Vice Chair Whalen. Uh, a couple of years ago before COVID, we uh, had been working with staff, particularly transportation and stormwater on uh, one way to ameliorate the business concerns about the loss of uh, parking spaces on the business streets. And staff uh, reached out and has come up with a 90 degree angle parking as a solution and it, it almost triples the parking spaces as long as the right of way of the city street is wide enough to accommodate that. Um, has that moved beyond just the pilot on uh, Hancock Street to other parts of the city? Do you know, Brad? Um, I do not. I don't know if Tate has any information on that. In the downtown area, um, there was concern about loss of parking with the greenways and cycle tracks. So we did a phase program of adding angled parking wherever we could on streets that uh, had, had lesser or lower levels of traffic. And that has been implemented along the way because we, we planned it out in the first 10 years, there would be no net loss of parking in the downtown area of public parking. And that is being implemented with each phase. But I'm not familiar with the uh, Hancock project. It's a utility undergrounding, resurfacing, and then restriping to increase the parking so that the bike new bike lane doesn't uh, impact the local businesses. Same Commissioner, is, is this the one that's related to the Midway Pacific Highway community plan update? It was, yes. Uh, I can get back to you. I'll look into that and see if transportation operations has uh, restriped that. I know that was um, part of the discussions uh, with the plan update. And so I can follow up with you at our later commission date. Okay. Last I noticed it hadn't been. So. Okay. Any other comments on that? Okay. Uh, I so that concludes the director's report. So now we will go to commission comment and just uh, please raise your hand. We'll start with Vice Chairman Whalen. First of all, I, I, I wanna compliment uh, planning staff in a big way because it was announced uh, earlier, well, this morning was in the paper that the city prevailed in uh, sequel litigation on both Morena and the PB uh, plan updates. and. And I don't know that people realize what a big deal that is because Judge Taylor is no walk in the park and whoever, uh, I forget who was responsible for those Tate, but they deserve a lot of credit for doing that and prevailing. Um, two other things, uh, AB 377, we have raised with um, the city and it turns out the city is on top of it. The bill has been gutted and amended and, it, and it's still bad, but I just wanted to make sure uh, that uh, Mr. Khalil has been tracking it. Basically, it, it takes the, the discretion away from the local water board and allows for other parties to assert strict liability at, to the detriment of a city. And then the other question I had for, again, for Mr. Khalil is, can we get a report back on where alternative compliance on stormwater stands today? Because uh, it's been quite, quite delayed. And that's all I have, thanks. Yeah, sure, um, I, I will follow up. As you know, I have followed up on uh, all your inquiries in the past. Uh, I know the last one, uh, uh, TSW responded uh, to your inquiry regarding the assembly bill, but uh, uh, there, uh, when I ask about the alternative compliance, uh, they said nothing is planned for another year or so. Uh, but uh, if you'd like me to bring it up again with Chris McFadden, the director of PSW, I'll be happy to do that. 
and the come back with please uh, why it is it's delayed another year. Sure, will do. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Austin. Yes, thank you. While we have Brad here, <laughs> I, I wish I could remember how many times I've been asked for clarification on uh, fees at the city for small units. Everybody's in, or lots of people are interested in small units and because of complete communities. So I have a couple of questions that might help uh, if, if Brad, you're able to answer these, <laughs> otherwise we'll, we'll, you can get back to us. Um, uh, does one pay per unit or per square foot if they're doing a small project, a small unit project downtown, uh, if they're not uh, using the complete communities, um, the, the new, uh, the new complete, complete communities approach? Um, I can't answer that for sure. I don't wanna give out bad information, Doug. Okay. Uh, so I will get back to you on that, though. As you know, there's a variety of different affordable housing programs, and each one has little nuances. So right. I just want to make sure um, I give you accurate information. You know what, Brad? It actually makes me feel better because I always feel a little bit ignorant. Every time. <laughs> like, why don't I know the answer? Yeah, unless Brad, you actually implement something, it, it doesn't stick as well as it should. <laughs> yeah. And then the other is complete communities. The only way for a project to waive dip fees uh, downtown. There are some other waiver of diff fees throughout the city for certain projects. And um, I believe the inclusionary units, if you build units on site, those units that are satisfying the inclusionary housing ordinance is, are exempt. And there may be one or two other ones, but I'll, I'll research that and get back to you, certainly. That'd be great. Thanks. I think uh, me and a lot of other people will be grateful. Thank you. All right. Hey, uh, Commissioner Boomhauer. Thank you. My question is actually for you, Chairman Hoffman. We had been talking as a planning commission about get with the clerk's office and the planning staff and the council office to see if planning commission could uh, formally be recognized a body that's giving a report that's not time limited. Uh, in the staff report portion of council presentations when there's matters that, that we have an end in or, or making recommendations on. Have you made any headway on this? We are coming back off, so yeah. maybe not. No, good question. And I have written out a list in, of some suggestions and I just, I need to pass that on to staff. Um, got busy with my vacation, so. Um, but yeah, that, that's on my radar and I'll probably get something done between now, bring that up next meeting. Okay, when you send those suggestions to staff, is that gonna be with the intention of then circulating it to the rest of the commission to, to chime in or what, what's yeah. your thinking? I was actually going to, um, I, 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 cause you had brought it up and we both are kind of on the same track. I, I was gonna have you review it a little bit and then we can present it to the rest of the staff, uh, to the commission uh, before we present it. Just make okay. sure we're all on the same page. Fantastic. I just wanna make sure this is moving forward cause yeah, I, the, I, think it's, I think it's a needed change. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think the only thing we have to be careful about is just Brown Act provisions. So I would probably send it to staff as a draft to be distributed for comments. So we're not kind of making decisions on our own outside of a, a public view, if you will. Um, so, and maybe the city attorney can give us advice on the best way to do that. But um, that, that's the only fear it's, you know, and maybe what we do is bring it up uh, a draft to a meeting and, and talk about it during a discussion item. Sure, if you want me to jump in, I agree. I think that would be the best um, approach is sending a draft to staff and then we could talk offline. But I think if it's something all the commission is interested in, it's something that should be placed as a future agenda item. So that way everyone can discuss and the public can give comment. Okay. And I think hopefully that would actually maybe give it more impact when it, it finally makes its way to council. Okay, 
are there any other uh, discussion items? Okay, seeing as not, uh, we will go to our first discussion item. This is item number two, the Otay Mesa Community Plan Amendment initiation for the Cal Terrace PA61 multifamily project. And staff, if you'd like to go ahead with a presentation. Before we do, I have to recuse on this item. So I bid you all good day. Okay, thank you, Vice Chairman Whalen. We will see you next meeting. Bye. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Tony Kempton, Associate Planner with the Planning Department for item two, a request to, to initiate a community plan amendment to the Otay Mesa Community Plan. The amendment seeks to redesignate a 4.46 acre site from community commercial residential prohibited to multifamily residential medium density at 15 to 29 dwelling units an acre, which would allow up to 129 dwelling units on the site. There is a vicinity map with the Otay Mesa community at the southernmost section of the map. This map shows the subject site uh, located at the southeast corner of Otay Mesa Road and Caliente Avenue. The site is currently undeveloped and designated for community commercial use, residential prohibited. The slide shows the site and adjacent uses. Existing commercial use, including the Palm Promenade Center just east of the 805 freeway, heavy commercial use in the industrial section east of the site, and planned commercial use in the future Southwest Village and future Central Village sites. East of the site is Brownfield Airport. Southeast is the Business and International Trade District. South of the site is open space. To the north is commercial and residential uses to the Southwest. Site is currently designated for community commercial residential prohibited. The initiation request is to redesignate the site to residential medium at 15 to 29 dwelling units an acre. The amendment requests a uh, concurrent uh, rezone of the subject site from CC13 to RM25. Um, transit is available on Otay Mesa Road fronting the site to the park and ride lot one half mile west of the site. Public facilities include Ocean View Hills Elementary, Ocean View Hills Neighborhood Park, Vista Del Mar Middle School, San Ysidro High School, and Fire Station 43. This slide uh, depicts the substantial growth in Otay Mesa from 2010 to 2019 with almost a 30% increase in dwelling units in that nine year period. In uh, 2017, a community plan amendment was initiated to res redesignate 14.6 acres, including the subject site from community commercial residential prohibited to community commercial residential permitted. The, 219 plan amendment was approved redesignating 9.2 acres of the 14.6 acre, 14 acre site to community, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, to community uh, commercial, to community, to uh, commercial, wait a minute. We designated from community commercial residential prohibited to residential at medium density. And uh, a 219 community plan amendment was initiated to redesignate 14.16 acres from community commercial residential prohibited to residential uh, at medium density. And this amendment was again initiated but not approved. A market analysis from uh, oops. excuse me. A market analysis from uh, 2018 concluded that a reduction of commercial use from approximately 118,000 square feet, 45,000 square feet, would not have an adverse effect on the local economy. Existing commercial use at Palm Promenade 
east of the 805 freeway plus heavy commercial use at the industrial area east of the site currently serve the area. Planned commercial use uh, at a future Southwest Village and future Central Village will provide additional commercial to serve the community. The proposed initiation meets the criteria for initiation and appears consistent with the goals and policies in the general plan for providing larger housing units. And the amendment would be consistent with the community plan goals for larger dwelling units, a variety of housing types, densities, units, sizes, and prices. The request also has the potential to provide the benefit or added benefit through housing within a trans transit uh, priority area, furthering climate action plan goals for the city and providing connectivity between the site and transit stop just to the west. The request also has the potential for additional uh, housing, including affordable housing, particularly at a time when the city council has declared a housing state of emergency in the city. Um, availability of public services. Uh, the Otay Mesa is a urbanized community and all necessary services appear available to accommodate the increase in density and intensity. Further analysis would be conducted as part of the plan amendment process. Um, on February 17th, 2021, the Otay Mesa Planning Group voted 10-1-0 to approve the initiation as meeting the initiation criteria. Main issues for study include appropriate land use and zone, a market analysis to determine impact on commercial, uh, on the community, I'm sorry, regarding reduced commercial use. Provision of amenities, public spaces and pedestrian scale elements, urban and site design considerations, provision of on-site affordable housing and pedestrian and bike connectivity. The complete list of issues is in the staff report. Staff recommendation is to initiate the plan amendment process to the Otay Mesa Community Plan. And that concludes the staff presentation and we are available for uh, questions. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is Kate Galloway. I just wanted to make one correction to the, the presentation Mr. Kempton gave on the amendment site that's to the east of this uh, proposed site. Um, that was initiated, but a project has not come back. Uh, just to clarify that it, uh, uh, there was no action to bring forward uh, an amendment to that yet. So just a clarification, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and speaking of clarifications, we'll get into the clarification questions portion of planning commissioners. Um, and, and I just have one and, and would do you mind, uh, go ahead and stop sharing, Tony, your screen. Um, Clarify question that I have is we, I remember back in 2017 and, and you made reference to the reports uh, that we took a similar action on the same site. It is the only difference is now this is being this portion of it, which I think is a little bit smaller than what we looked at um, is we're taking out the commercial and it's all residential or could you explain staff what uh, the difference is? Yes, we're taking out the uh, community commercial residential prohibited and changing it or redesignated just to residential at medium density. And in 2017, we were taking out the same designation um, and it was going to be a combination of commercial and residential. And so that's the difference is just now this, this initiative um, is, is um, not including commercial. Is that correct? correct? Okay, correct. got it. Wasn't sure. The, re the result of this is that there was a 45,000 square foot commercial component that was approved. And that uh, because of the, and the applicant could go into greater detail with the market, they were unable to secure any tenants for that. And they've now come back to rezone and redesignate that to residential. Got it. That fills a gap. Thank you, Mr. Galloway. Okay. Uh, any other clarification questions from the Planning Commission? Okay, I don't see any hands there. So let's get into the public testimony. Um, we will let the applicant go first. Uh, and I think that will be Mr. Ayala. Um, 
I just noticed in a, 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 something that was sent to me by staff is that there are several speakers who are ceding their time to you. And can I ask you, uh, Mr. Ayala, how much time you, you will be taking? Uh, good morning, Chairman Hoffman. Uh, in regards to the presentation, I think Tony did a great job on the presentation and reporting this to the Planning Commission today. If there aren't any other questions, I would cede all of our time for questions from the Planning Commission. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, let's go to, if there are any other people who would like to speak on this, uh, please indicate by raising your electronic hand. You'll see a little button on the, your screen that uh, would raise a hand. I three, see three people um, in the attendees list, but no one's raising their hand. So I'll give you just a few seconds if you'd like to speak. And seeing as none, uh, we will then conclude the public testimony portion and go right into commission discussion. Uh, I'm going to go in alphabetical order this time. Uh, Commissioner Austin. You know, right now, I don't have a lot to say about this. It seems pretty straightforward. I don't see a reason to object uh, to the uh, recommendations uh, that were made by staff. I'm going to listen to my, my esteemed colleagues and uh, go from there. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Boomhauer. Uh, I agree with Commissioner Austin, but I will I will see his comments and then raise him by making a motion to approve uh, staff's recommendation. Then I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion uh, to approve this general this initiation and a second by Commissioner Austin. Uh, Commissioner Malbro. No, I don't really have any major comments. I've read through it. It seems to be very straightforward and. Um... I'm, I'm ready to take a vote when, when it's called on. Okay, uh, Commissioner Moden. We have one um, question. So CC13 traditionally allows residential. Is, is there an explanation of why um, the community plan put residential prohibited? Maybe, maybe I missed that. Sure. Um, the the community plan at the time put the residential prohibited just because um the idea is that this area would be more of a primary commercial area um and that the residential would be further to the north and to the south um but uh with the pr recent amendment and the need to provide additional residential um we supported the idea of converting this area from uh, only commercial to allowing for residential. Um, the CC, you're correct, the CC13 does allow for uh, mixed or multiple use, uh, but in this case, the plan designation would not allow for residential, so it would be difficult to make the findings um, to allow for residential with a conflict with the community plan. By doing this, it allows for uh, residential to go forward um, on that site which would be consistent with the uh, previous community plan amendment. So it had nothing to do with air quality, the, the residential prohibited? Um, certainly being next to the freeway, there are um, issues of noise and air quality, but those are issues that uh, would be addressed as part of the project going forward. Okay, um, I, I support the initiative, so I have no further comments or questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Otsuji. Um, I have no comments, I'll be supporting it. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Whalen has recused on this item. Uh, I don't really have any further comments. It's, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I did review the market report and I, I think that really said it all. It's just, it, it's hard to support that much commercial and, and this does make sense with its location near the transit facilities and uh, so I can support the motion as well. So are there any other comments from any of the commission? So with that, we'll go ahead and take a vote. Um, this was a, a, a motion by Commissioner Boomhauer and a second by Commissioner Austin to support the initiative and we'll go through a roll call. Commissioner Austin. Aye. Commissioner Boomhauer. Aye. 
Commissioner Malbro? Aye. Commissioner Modine? Aye. Commissioner Otsuchi? Aye. And Chairman Hoffman is an aye. That passes unanimously. And I am going to quickly look at Tim to make sure we have no other items uh, to discuss. We have no other items. Then with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. And welcome to your first meeting, Commissioner Malbro. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. <laughs> and, and I can tell you they're not all this easy. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I kind of <laughs> and by the way, I will make sure I'm at the dress code. I will have a blazer on at the next meeting. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Keep one keep one nearby, you know. <laughs> Nobody we don't know if we got shorts on or not, but uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there, but just yeah.